Hi guys, welcome to another Word Electronics Repair video. I think some of you will remember this from a few weeks ago. So this monitor has an LED strip down one side. And basically there were four segments of LEDs on the strip. And one segment had one LED not lit and that was stopping the whole thing from working. So I ordered a LED strip and you can see now that I've replaced it and this is actually working. And uh, contrary to some people's comments about getting dust in it and a few other things, and I said, well, I've never had a problem. You can see the picture's fine on it. Yeah, it's good. So it's working. The problem I have with this now is that the power supply it requires is a 14 volt power supply. Now I don't have any 14 volt power supplies. I wanted to give this uh, to my wife. I got it cheap at the uh, car boot sale, and her monitor is not very good. So I shall definitely be in the good books if I give her this uh, monitor. And of course, I need a power supply to do that. The monitor requires a 2 amp supply, and I do have some 12 volt 2 amp supplies, but this is a 5 amp supply, which is more than capable of running this has plenty of headroom basically i'm pretty sure this is a good working one so let's just uh, check to make sure it is and now let's see if we can convert this from 12 volts to 14 volts um, so we can go yeah okay so we have 12 volts coming out of it the first thing we need to do then is get into it and as i mentioned you can use a Dremel or sometimes you can put a screwdriver down here and effectively hit the end with a hammer and sometimes get the thing to crack open. So let's give that technique a go. Ah, okay, so both of my hammers are in the van and the van happens to be in the garage being serviced ready for its, uh, in the UK it's called an MOT, it's safety test, called ITV here. Or E T U E as a Spanish say. So let's misuse something. Yeah, let's see if we can actually get things to open. Oh, there we go. You see, so one blow on the corner, and it's effectively cracked it open. And how about that? Yeah. So that's uh, one way to get into them. If that doesn't work, you have to use a Dremel. So we have a power supply here. Let's have a look to see what the controller chip is and we then hopefully can figure out how to change the output voltage of this power supply. The first thing I'm going to test is is there any voltage in the high voltage capacitor just to be sure it's safe. So let's have a quick look at that. I can already see the controller chip is on the back of it so that's what we're going to be working with. Um, let's just uh, set us to volts. I missed it first time. Uh, volts. And what's in the large capacitor? Well, oh, yeah, you see, 250 volts in there. So that's why we need to test these things. Okay, so we have a high voltage. So the safest way to discharge this is with a power resistor. So let's just. Uh, connect the power resistor across the capacitor so I'm just literally holding it against the contacts like so okay I'll give it a moment now let's see what's in it down to 1.3 volts so it's almost discharged now I mean it's safe now yeah so there guys that's why you need to check the capacitors and power supplies before you do any work with them okay Put it for the vault. So it's safe to work on. Now let's have a look to see what this chip is. I'll get the microscope. Here's our switch mode power supply controller, the pulse modulator. We need to just uh, see if we can clean that bit of gunk off it and then we can read the part number. So let's have a look at what we've got. Okay, we can probably read it now. I'll just have a look down at the microscope itself. One moment. Well, it says 1207A and then PCJH. So 1207A is the part number. 
Let's see if we can find a data sheet for that. This is the data sheet. It's an NCP1207A by On Semiconductor. And we can see it's a pulse width modulator controller. So this is definitely the right chip. And we can see the way the circuit works here. So pin two is the feedback. And that is effectively monitoring the output. So this is your output voltage, this here. And this effectively is a Zenit diode and the opto isolator LED. So the voltage of this Zenit diode basically affects the voltage at which this LED comes on. Although there's no little arrows on it, it is an LED inside the opto isolator. That then shines on the phototransistor, which affects the voltage on feedback here. So we can see feedback sets the peak, peak current set point, as you say, in fact. Interestingly, it says it sets the current, but I'm sure this actually sets the voltage. So basically, the thing that sets the operating voltage is this device, which it shows as a Zenit diode. But on our circuit, I think we will find we don't have a Zenit diode, but we have a little IC called TL431, which is basically a programmable Zenit. So let's have a look to see what's on our circuit board. This is our opto isolator. And this little device here that looks like a transistor will certainly be the TL431 or something similar to that. So let's just tip it down. Let's have a look to see what we actually have here. Okay. And we have a TL431A. I'll just get the focus on so you'll actually see that quite clearly. Okay, yeah, TL431K. So that basically is setting the voltage at which the opto isolator LED turns on. And if we can affect the voltage that this has, the reference voltage, we can affect the output voltage. We could, as one possibility, just replace this with a Zenit diode. But let's see if we can figure out how to change the output, sorry, how to change the reference voltage of the TL431. First of all, we'll look at the TL431 datasheet. Here we have the TL431 datasheet. Basically, the TL431 is a 2.5 volt reference. So you can see here, TL431K, typically as 2.495, we'll call it two and a half volt reference voltage. So if we wire it like this, so we connect the reference pin to the cathode, it will act like a 2.5 volt Zenit diode. That's what it basically does. To change the voltage of the Zenit, which is effectively what it is, is a programmable Zenit diode. We need to use two resistors. So the ratio of these resistors will set the voltage at this reference point. And for example, if they were both the same value, say, like, you know, 10k and 10k, depending on the amount of current we're flowing, if they were both the same value, then for the voltage here to be 2.5, the voltage here would have to be 5. So we're now working like a five volt zen. And there's actually a formula that works it out exactly. Voltage ref equals one plus R1 over R2, but it's this little formula, yeah? So we could use the formula and work out what resistor values we need and effectively make this work at whichever voltage we want. I suspect in our power supply, it's probably just working as a 2.5 volt reference. So let's just check that first. I just changed to a different data sheet because it shows the actual pinout of ours. The other one was just showing the surface mount type. And you can see these come in various packages. But ours is this type. So the middle pin is the anode. And then we have the reference at one end and the cathode at the other end and obviously there's a flat side so we know which end is which and you can see on the the typical circuit that the anode goes to ground so we can check on our board 
the anode, I think we'll find, will go to ground. And then from the reference, we can measure to ground, which is one end of the IC, and find a resistance if there is. And we can measure to the other end. So we'll know straight away whether it's connected directly to the cathode by the fact there's a short circuit, in which case it's a 2.5 volt reference. Otherwise, we'll find two resistances, and that will be setting the reference voltage. On ours, this then is the reference, just looking at the data sheet, and in the middle is the anode, and this end is the cathode. We can see our circuit is actually using some resistors. So the reference voltage across the anode and cathode will be set by those resistors. And we can actually have a look to see what reference voltage we have on ours. This is our circuit. So we have the 12 volts coming out of the power supply from the switch mode transformer, okay? And from here we have a resistor, which is basically to limit the current, coming to the LED in the opto isolator. And then this goes to the TL431, which is like so. And this is going to ground. And then obviously inside the opto isolator, this shines on the photo transistor, which goes the high voltage side to our switch mode controller. And we want to make this LED come on when we have a higher voltage here. We now have 12.3 volts and we want 14 volts. Now we know that we have a from here to here, a resistor, and then from here to ground, a resistor, okay? And this ratio of these two is setting the voltage. Here's our circuit board, and we can see the TL431 is here. This pin being the cathode anode, and this pin being the reference. So if we go from the reference we're looking for two resistors. I can see it comes over here. Oh yes, and it looks like this one. I'll just go to resistance mode, one moment. It looks like this one is connected to the reference, and yeah, this end of this one is connected to reference. So that's the two resistors. This one's marked 203, so that's 20 followed by three zeros, or 20,000. And this is marked 512, which is 51 followed by two zeros, it's 5,100, or 20,000 we say is 20k ohms, and 5,100 is 5.1k ohms. So from the other end of these resistors, one will go to ground and one will go to our power. So let's have a look. So this one, the 20k, does it go to ground? No, it doesn't. So does it go to the 12 volts in the end of the power connector? Yes, it does. So 20K goes to the output power, and the other one then must go to ground. So from here to ground. Yes, it does. So we know what our two resistors are. Now, to change the output voltage, we need to change the value of one of these resistors. So the easiest way to do that is to use an online calculator for a TL431. This is an online calculator. Um, I can put the link in the description to this video. But if you Google for TL431 calculator, you will find this one and other ones. So we know we have 20K, which here is R1. We have R1 and R2. So we have 20K going to the output power. So in here, we can put 20 thousand it's showing it in ohms and going to ground we have 5100 hit calculate and the output voltage 12.3 which is exactly what we have to increase the output voltage we need to decrease this resistor so the next one down from 5.1 and standard values is 4.7k so let's try a 4.7 and that gives us 13 volts the next standard value is 4.3. So let's try that. 
and that gives us 14.12. And if you increase the value, you can decrease the output voltage. Well, we're going to put a 4.3k in. But you can see if you went up to the next value, it would decrease the output. Yeah, 5.6, I think 6.8 is another standard one. Yeah, you can see that. So we're going to change our 5.1k for a 4.3k resistor. I don't have any 4.3k resistors in the right size. These are 0805, I think this is 0603. But to be quite honest, there's no current really flowing into this reference. So it's not going to be a problem if I can mount a physically smaller resistor. I don't have to worry about wattage. So let's just see if we can get a little bit of solder on here. I'll probably end up having to use the tweezers just to push it back into place. It will be easier if I uh, turn the board around this way. You can do this hot air if you prefer. It depends. I mean, there's different methods, and whichever one suits you, just use it. But that's fine. I've got at the end of that. It's a little bit crooked, but that's fine. It's in place. We have it there. So let's try our power supply now and let's see what output voltage we have. We're ready to go. I do recommend when you're making these sort of modifications is to use the light bulb as a current limiter in case the power supply doesn't like it. At least you're not going to blow something up or cause a big flash and a bang. And then let's uh, switch it on and if that just pulses once on the light bulb hopefully we'll have the desired voltage coming out of this. Let's see. Yeah, and we now have 14 volts. You can see now that this sort of modification is quite easy to implement. And if you didn't know how to do this in the past, I'm sure you will know how to do this in the future. The next time you want to change the output of a power supply, just refer to this video and Bob's your uncle, as they say. I hope you enjoyed this video. I enjoyed showing you that. And I'm looking forward to seeing you all very soon on another Learn Electronics Repair video. So, just one more thing to say, guys. Ciao for now.